After his defection to Reform UK last week, Lee Anderson was back in Parliament today, grilling the chair of Dorset and Wilshire Fire and Rescue Authority, Rebecca Knox, after she claimed that her force, her own force, was institutionally racist. It's fair to say Lee's questioning left her in a bit of a muddle. Unfair advantages white people have in your force? I would hope not, none. Not advantages. Did I hear you? Yeah, do they correctly? have any advantages? No. Then how can you be institutionally racist? Um, I, 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 sorry, I, I might have to get back to you. No, um, no, you no. don't. Yeah, I'm joined now by the man himself, Lee Anderson. So, Lee, this fire force declared itself institutionally racist, essentially. Yeah. And then when you said, what makes you institutionally racist, there, there weren't actually any answers, were there? I think this is just a case, Patrick, of a, of a boss here just ticking a box, admitting that the, the force is institutionally racist when it's probably not, just to keep a job. It was quite pathetic. You know, I, I challenged her, I grilled her on the spot in the Home Affairs Select Committee today, and she couldn't answer a simple question. It totally flummoxed her. Uh, why they're doing this is, again, it's virtue signalling at the highest level. Well, it is literally at the highest level, though. To declare, be willing to declare yourselves institutionally racist for most people would be yeah. the worst thing imaginable. You would yeah. try to avoid that at all costs. Yeah. They've willingly done this and then not got any evidence to back it up, which is, just doesn't make any but sense. But the thing is, Patrick, she's the boss of this fire service, of this fire authority. Mm. She's admitted in a Home Affairs Select Committee that her force is institutionally racist and then, like you say, cannot back it up with any evidence. She's just ticking boxes to keep a job, as far as I can. So you, you honestly think that we're in a situation in Britain at the moment where companies and corporations and, indeed, public bodies like that are deliberately saying that they're institutionally yeah. racist? As Absolutely. A... It's almost as if, Patrick, it's fashionable to say that you're racist. It's pathetic. I just find that absolutely bizarre. It's staggering. Uh, is she going to come back to you with any examples at some point? Do you well, think? I, I, I doubt it very much, Patrick. I mean, I mean, the whole session was. I mean, if you watched further on in the clips uh, of this of this lady today, she was absolutely pathetic. Um, like I say, it's virtue signalling at the highest level. Mm. Definitely doing it to keep a job, in my humble opinion. I just find it absolutely bonkers. Most people would just go, crazy. you know, to hell and high water to, to be desperate to not be seen to be. Racist, like yeah. institutionally racist, yeah. and yet there you are, admitting it and hoping that the mob go away and shock or they go. don't go away. Go. Anyway, after a week of fevered plotting, intense speculation about leadership challenges, Rishi Sunak faced the gauntlet of PMQs earlier today, and he certainly wasn't given an easy ride. You can see why he doesn't want an election. Yeah. Why his party have lost faith in him. Why half his cabinet are lining up to replace him. Yeah. No answers, no plan, no clue. Well, Sunak was then, yet again, hauled over the hot coals by the Backbench 1922 committee this evening. Now, look, Lee, you are the former Tory deputy party chairman. You've been in the room at these meetings before. You were the red wall made flesh. People <laughs> used to want you to turn up at their Conservative associations and bang the drum. So you really know what people are saying about Sunak, all right? Now you're finally switched party, you can reveal the truth right here on this show. It's, what it's not a matter of re revealing the truth, Patrick, is that uh, the Parliamentary Conservative Party, and I've got many, many friends in there, so I'm, I'm not here to, to, to diss them or slag them off, but uh, it, it is a fact that the Parliamentary Party are probably out of touch with the Conservative membership and the vast majority of Conservative voters in this great country of ours, out of touch, Parliament's out of touch, we know that. And we keep hearing the same thing, stick to the plan, stick to the plan, the plan's working. This is the plan that's put the Conservative Party 20, 25 points behind in the polls. The plan's not well, working. Well, you know what happens at these 1922 committee meetings, Lee? And, you know, all too often I got the impression that you had to come out of those and go, oh, you know what, it won't I stopped going to them, Patrick, because uh -huh. I thought it was just a waste of time. It's a lot of people, no disrespect to my colleagues, but they're going there and they're blowing smoke up a certain part of an anatomy of the Prime Minister, making him feel good when actually what he needs to be told is the truth. And unfortunately, a lot of my colleagues don't tell them. You think they're, do you think they're lying? To, so you think Tory MPs and presumably Cabinet Ministers are lying to the Prime Minister about what the mood is actually like about him? I said last year, Patrick, that certain parts of the Conservative Party are like the, the band on the Titanic. They sit there playing the same old song, they can see what's coming, but right. do nothing about it. All right, well, I'll tell you what, um, we are now going to be talking about another... 
record-breaking day for small boats, yeah. OK? 450 migrant arrivals on UK shores today alone. That's the highest number to arrive in a single day this year. Meanwhile, over in the House of Lords... Aha! Oh, look at him. There we go. The health minister we never had. Uh, <laughs> rebel peers have this evening done their level best to delay the government's Rwanda bill by backing seven amendments. It means that flights to Rwanda won't now take off until, we think, maybe June. Lee... Have Sunak's chances of getting flights off the ground by spring vanished? Uh, probably, Patrick. Look, I mean, I, I spoke to colleagues earlier today. I think the, there's going to be thousands of young men landing on these shores all throughout the summer this year. This is not a, boat, uh, a vote winner at all. We had the chance last year. You know when the first... Well, it's, it's longer than a year ago now, actually, Patrick. When that first Rwanda flight was on the tarmac ready to go, we should have just sent it. This nonsense will have stopped by now. I'm going to be talking in a few minutes' time about one channel migrant was stabbed, apparently, on a small boat crossing the channel today. Yeah. And it is the latest in a long line of issues that we've had. Yeah. Do you think more needs to be made of the idea that we might be importing violent thugs? Patrick, I've said this for the last three and a half years. We are importing young men. We don't know where they're from, what the background is. They could be, you know, potential terrorist thugs. Why are they carrying knives on dinghies well, across yeah. the country? That's the question. Well, Why are they carrying knives? As far as we can gather today, of this record-breaking day, it looks like at least one of those people that we've imported today is uh, potentially an attempted murderer. Yep. Is certainly armed with a knife, from what the reports are saying. But we've had some of these um, migrants before, Patrick, come over and commit horrific sex crimes and murders. <laughs> you know, we... I've said it time and time again, we're giving right. this country away to... a. a a third world culture, if you like, they come here, they've got no respect for our country at all, and they're just roaming loose in our communities and causing all obviously, sorts of mayhem. Look, obviously, there's a huge amount of pushback to that. People say they're all fleeing war and that they there's aren't no war in France, help, Patrick. Et cetera, so. There is no war in France. Mm. That, that was Reform UK MP Lee Anderson.